In this video, we're going to see how to remove the reflection from a mirror with Photoshop Elements. We'll see how to go from this to this. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 15 for this video, but it'll work in other versions as well. The first thing we want to do is create a new blank layer in the Layers panel. To do that, just click on the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel, and now we have a new blank layer called Layer 1. The next thing we need to do is make a selection of the mirror in our photograph. And since the mirror in this photo is basically a rectangle, I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And if you look over in the toolbox right now, the regular lasso tool is in the spot where the lasso tools are, but there's three different lasso tools. So first I need to click on the regular lasso tool, and now I can go down to the tool options, and I can choose the polygonal lasso tool by clicking on it down there. I'll just give you a quick uh, example of how the polygonal lasso tool works if you're not familiar with it. Basically, you click a point and then the polygonal lasso tool connects the last two points that you clicked with a line that will become part of your selection. I'll click here, and then click there, click there, click there, and now to close the selection, I can move my cursor over towards my starting point, and when I get to where my starting point is, you'll notice that my cursor changes into the polygonal lasso tool with a little tiny circle down and to the right of it, and that indicates that if I click now, I will close my selection, so I'll do that. And now I have that selection, so I'm going to deselect that. That was just our example, so I'll press Command or Control D for deselect. And now I'll go over to my mirror, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can get a more accurate selection. To do that, I'm going to press Command plus sign on a Mac, or it would be Control plus sign on a PC. And then I'm just going to use my scroll wheel to center my mirror in my active image area. And I'm going to start in the upper left corner of the mirror. And actually, I'm going to do one other thing. See how my cursor looks like the polygonal lasso tool icon, which is fine and might be preferable for some of you. But I prefer a different icon that you can get by pressing the caps lock key. So I'll do that now, and you'll see what the cursor changes to. It's basically uh, crosshairs, and there's a little dot right in the center, and that's where the line will come from when I click my mouse. I'm going to place that little dot right in the upper left corner and click once, and then I'm just going to drag my cursor down to the lower left corner, and I think that's about where the corner is. I'll click once there, go to the next corner, and click click and I'm staying a little outside the mirror area because it'd be better to have my selection be bigger than my mirror rather than smaller than the mirror. So I'll click once there and I'll click once up in this corner and then go over to my first corner, wait for my cursor to change with the little dot and I'll click once to close the selection the mirror area is selected as indicated by the marching ants. The next thing we're going to do is put a gradient inside of that selection. Let's go to the toolbox and make the gradient tool active by clicking on it. Let's go down to the uh, tool options and if I click on this arrow next to this preview it opens up some gradient options and I want this third one over, which is going to give us a gradient that goes from black to white. So I'll click on that. Actually, I'll double click on it. That will make that gradient active and also close the preview gradient box. Also down in the tool options, we have these five different options for the kind of gradient we want. I want the linear one, which is already active, but if it's not, you can click on it to make it active. To explain how the gradient tool works, I'm going to show my rulers in the active image area. To do that, go up to the View menu and choose Rulers by clicking on it, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-R on a Mac, or it would be Shift-Control-R on a Windows PC. 
Now rulers appear along the top and left side of the active image area. The reason I want the rulers visible is because you can pull non-printing guidelines out from the rulers. If you click and drag down from the top ruler, you get a horizontal guide. Once you release the mouse button, the guide will be placed in that spot. Placing guides isn't normally a part of this tutorial technique, but I'm going to use the guides to demonstrate how the gradient tool works. You can move a guide by using the move tool. So if I get the move tool from the toolbox, my cursor looks like an arrowhead until I get right over the guideline and then it changes into this other icon which indicates that if I click and drag I can move my guideline. So I'll do that now. I'll click and drag down a bit and then when I release the mouse button the guide is placed in that new spot. You can also use the move tool to remove a guide by clicking and dragging it beyond the active image area. So if I click and drag it up off the active image area, the guide disappears. I'm going to actually place three guidelines quickly here just to show you that if you have multiple guidelines you can quickly delete all of them by going up to the view menu and click on clear guides and then they all go away. I'm also going to get rid of our selection by pressing Command-D on a Mac or it would be Control-D on a Windows PC. If you use the gradient tool while your image has an active selection, the gradient will be confined to the selected area, which is what we'll actually want a little later. But for now, I don't want a selection. I'm going to add two horizontal guides and two vertical guides and just place them anywhere on my photo. So I'll place one here and maybe one here and then to get my vertical guides I go over to the ruler on the left side and click and drag out and I'll place one here and one here. Now I'll make sure the gradient tool is active by clicking on it in the toolbox and remember from our options that we chose the black and white gradient and chose the linear option. How it works is with the gradient tool active, you click and drag in the active image area. I want to make sure that I'm working on that blank layer that we added earlier, and I can see that I am because it's active in the layers panel. You can click and drag in any direction that you want with the gradient tool, so let's start by dragging left to right. So I'll place my cursor on the vertical guide that's on the left side and I'll click and drag towards the right. As I drag, I'm going to hold down the shift key, which will keep my line perfectly straight. And when I get over to the other vertical guide on the right side, I'm going to release the mouse button and also the shift key. And now we can see our gradient in the active image area. You can see that everything from the first guide and everything to the left of that guide is solid black. Then, as it goes towards the right, it gradually gets lighter. Everything from the second guide and to the right of it is completely white. I'm going to undo that by pressing Command or Control Z. And now let's draw a gradient using the two horizontal guides. So I'll place my cursor on the top guide and hold down the shift key as I click and drag down and then when I get to the bottom horizontal guideline I'll release the mouse button and release the shift key. Whoops, and my image floated off a little bit so I'll try to kind of center that again. And now everything from the top guide and above it is 100% black and everything from the bottom guide and below it is 100% white with a gradient blend from black to white in between the two guides. Let's undo that. You can also draw a diagonal gradient which is what I want to do for our mirror. To show that 
I'll place my cursor where the left and top guidelines intersect, so right here, and press and hold down the mouse button as I drag diagonally towards the intersection of the right and bottom guidelines. And then when I get to those two guidelines right there, I'll release the mouse button. And now we have a diagonal gradient that is 100% black at the top left of our guidelines and is 100% white at the bottom right of the guidelines with gradual shades of gray in between. So let's undo that. I hope that helps you to understand how the gradient tool works. I'm going to delete those guides by going up to the view menu and choosing clear guides by clicking on it. Now let's bring back our selection of the mirror by going up to the select menu and choosing reselect by clicking on it. We get the marching ants around our mirror to indicate our selection. If you use the gradient tool when you have an active selection, the gradient will only be applied to the selected area instead of to the whole layer like it was earlier when there was no selection. I'm going to zoom out by pressing command minus sign on a Mac or it would be control minus sign on a PC so that we can see all of our image. I'm going to center that a little better. There we go. So let's start in the upper left corner of our selection which is in the corner of the mirror and then click and drag diagonally to the lower right corner of the mirror right down there and then release the mouse button. And I think that gives us a pretty realistic looking mirror without a reflection in it. If you don't like your gradient, you can easily replace it by just dragging out a new one. You don't even have to undo the last gradient like I've been doing. Just draw a new one and it'll replace the previous gradient. One other thing I'd like to explain about gradients is that even though the gradient will only show in the selected area, when you have an active selection, you aren't confined to having 100% black and white in the selected area. To show you what I mean, I'm going to add a couple of horizontal guides. I'll put one here and then one down here somewhere. And I'm going to reposition my image a little better. Now let's draw a new gradient to replace our current one. I'm still going to use the opposite corners of the mirrors to draw my uh, diagonal line, but I'm not going to stop right at the corners. Instead, I'll start and stop where I place the guidelines, starting at the top guideline, somewhere like here. I'll click and drag down towards the other corner and go to my other guideline and stop. And you can see that my line still goes through the opposite corners of the mirror, but instead of starting and stopping in those corners, it starts and stops at the guides, which are beyond the corners. So now I'll release the mouse button to get the new gradient. Even though the gradient is confined to the selected area, where I start and stop the gradient affects the results, because where I start is still 100% black, so that would be way up at this guideline, and where I stop is 100% white, so down here. So it's no longer in these corners of the mirror. Basically, we stretched out the gradient. We can also compress the gradient by drawing a shorter line. If I st start and stop inside of the corners, actually, so I'll start here and just drag to here, and then release the mouse button. You can see now we have what looks like a very high contrast gradient. Everything from about this point and above is black and everything from this point and down is white. So play around with the gradient tool and I think you'll get the hang of uh, how to control your results. It might seem complicated because of all the details that we covered but basically it's just a three-step process. Step one is to create a new layer. Step two is make a selection of the mirror. And step three is to add a gradient. So that wraps up this tutorial on how to remove the reflection from a mirror. Until next time, this is Rick. 
from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.